Hello, today I want to share with you some early progress I've been making on a motorized cone winder. While I haven't fully decided if I'm going to be making this product or not, that sort of depends on how the prototypes turn out still. I have been happy with the progress so far, and I'm getting closer to making that decision. The first thing I want to show you is this 3D printed model of a very early prototype of the uh, cone winder. So I'll walk you through what all of the different pieces do and how it's going to work. But um, right now I'm just focusing on getting all of the parts in the right spots and making sure that the overall system will work. So uh, the way it basically works is uh, the drum will be actively spun by a motor. So there's actually a, a pulley right here and there'll be a belt with a motor down in the base and some controls on the side to control the speed of the drum. And as the drum spins, it will control the, it will sort of feed the yarn back and forth along the drum and the cone will be tightly pressed up against the drum. So as the drum spins, the cone spins. So this way I only need one motor to sort of drive both of the back and forth motion and filling up the cone which will greatly reduce the cost and make it a much more affordable machine. Uh, the cone does have to be sort of tensioned properly against the drum. And in the textile industry, they tend to use a bunch of weights and things. Um, these parts are oftentimes either steel or a really dense plastic. But um, for this, I'll be using springs uh, that will kind of pull the cone into the drum. And the advantage of springs is it gets down, it reduces the weight a lot, and shipping is a big part of the cost. So by using springs instead of weights, it makes it much more affordable in the end because the, the shipping will be less expensive. And as the cone sort of fills up, I have these slide rails on the side, and the cone will just sort of push itself back as it gets fuller and fuller with yarn. And when it's empty, it'll just um, be pressed up against the drum like this. So that's how the system works. Um, I've done some rough calculations. The cones should hold at least eight ounces of uh, fiber, probably uh, more than that. And I'll be able to make like different uh, attachments here that can hold bobbins or, or different things. So I'm expecting it to, you know, be extendable just like my spinning wheels are and I will probably release a bunch of the files like the cones and things so people can 3D print their own um, additional cones if needed or not. But one advantage of sort of this cone is that it will be very inexpensive to uh, make with injection molding which is how I'll make this machine so I'll probably include a, a very large number of cones at a very affordable price because uh, a big thing you're doing with cones is storing uh, your yarn on them. So you, you tend to want a lot of cones when you have a, a device like this. Okay, so that kind of covers the basics of how this functions. Now I'm going to get into the magic of this drum because this is just a prototype of the drum. I want to show you a, a real one now. So here is an actual drum from one of those um, textile. So you can just buy these online. Um, all sorts of people make them. They've been around forever. But it is a very clever design. Like, if you just look at it on its surface, when I started looking, I'm thinking, oh, this is the standard uh, auto-reversing thread. So um, it's a pretty common design where if you sort of follow the threads here, you'll see the, they just kind of wrap around. And then at the end here, they turn, and then you start going the other way, and you just sort of wrap around them. Um, the problem is if you just did standard threads, uh, it wouldn't work because when you get at these crossroads, if they were at the same depth, the yarn would sometimes go the wrong way. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Let me uh, get something set up here and I can show you how the yarn fits into these grooves. Here's the textile cone winding drum that I was talking about. and. What you'll see is like when it's in this deeper groove, it's obviously just going to follow that. The real magic comes into play when it gets to the part of the groove where it kind of has to jump over the deeper groove like it is right now. 
and it gets shallow and then it jumps across to the gap. And that one's the easy one. The really tricky one is the one that's in the center right here. And what it does is it, you can kind of see it like it, it actually travels backwards. And like, why does it make that decision? It's because the radius of this portion is larger than the radius over here. So it actually, uh, because of the tension of the yarn, will fall back into this groove every time. And you can kind of see it just kind of makes that decision right there. And then it will kind of keep following the deeper groove. And then it comes back the other way. It has to jump across once there. And then it's going to jump across here. And it'll just sort of keep continuing to follow these grooves, making the jumps half the time and going down the deep groove half the time. And that's kind of how this uh, device works. So it really is a pretty clever design. And it's how I'm going to sort of make this consumer level uh, cone winder instead of the big industrial. Like the big industrial ones oftentimes will use these steel drums that weigh 50 pounds and stuff and they're running them 24 seven. So they don't really work for your typical knitter or hand spinner. But I think that, you know, there's no reason I can't bring this design into a little portable package that can, you know, easily be mailed out to you guys at an affordable price. And because it is only one motor that drives both that back and forth motion and rolls it onto the cone, it makes sort of the whole system more affordable, especially when you injection mold the design like I'm planning to. So I have, I have pretty good confidence that this is going to turn into a, a product that will be super interesting to, you know, all of the sock knitting machines and the weavers know that they need this. But I think that even your standard knitter is going to find out that, oh yeah, knitting off of a cone is you know, a much better experience than knitting off of a, a yarn ball. So I think that a, a lot of people will find, you know, once there is a really affordable uh, cone winder out there that eh, it's a pretty uh, interesting thing. Anyways, I know a lot of people said they're interested and I'm definitely trying to make this work out. I just have to work out all of the details and get the uh, engineering work done. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated as I make progress on this. Thanks for watching.